Hey everybody, this is Francesca from the Roadhouse Arts Studios in Bulgaria, Texas. Uh, this video today is for the Art Jewelry Elements team and I am showing you today how to dress uh, your hammers. So in a second I'll show you what these look like um, uh, starting out and then we'll walk you through a process of making them look all nice and pretty uh, for when you're doing your jewelry work. Let's go! So here we've got a hammer that's uh, pretty much brand new. It's a rivet hammer and it has not been dressed at all. You can see it's got some sharp points and things that you don't want to leave on there because it's, uh, you know, that's going to leave marks on your metal when you use it. And over here we have a student hammer that somebody gouged the heck out of. And so we uh, started the process of grinding it down and then just left it sit out. So now it's kind of rusty and gross. And, uh, and so we have to fix that. So we're going to work on these two hammers uh, today and we're going to make them look all nice. What we're going to use to do that is this beautiful piece of equipment here. This is a central machinery belt sander, and you can get it at uh, Harbor Freight or Northern Tool, uh, something like that. It's about 35 bucks, and it's a terrific investment for tool making. Um, <clears throat> so I highly recommend it. I I'm going to show you a way to do this that you don't have to have this piece of equipment, but for right now, we're going to start with this because it's much easier and faster. Ready? So a couple of safety things. First, you want to make sure that you're working near a water source, which we are, and that you've got a uh, fire extinguisher handy. You'll see that this throws off sparks. Uh, and while it's not a significant fire hazard, you know, anything can happen. Roadhouse happens to be an extremely old building and we're working on wooden floors, so we just want to be careful about that. Um, you also, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you want to make sure you put on a mask or something. This throws off a bunch of dust uh, and it's not very good for your lungs. Uh, this also has, uh, this particular machine has an outlet that you can plug into your shop vac and that makes it um, much easier. I don't have it plugged in right now, so we're just going to, uh, don't be like me, we're just going to kind of rough ride it. Uh, but you wanna... Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it against the belt and I'm going to work down to progressive belt sizes. These are uh, uh, ceramic belts, uh, one inch belts that I got online. I'm starting with a 120 and I'm going to work down uh, to sort of a cloth. I'm not sure this even has a number, maybe it's 600. Uh, and then we're going to move to some uh, sanding papers to kind of dress it up and make it look nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of work in this motion against the part of the belt that has some flex in it, and that'll create a nice, gently curved surface uh, on this hammerhead. So let's go. So this didn't take very long. You can see that we've got kind of a smooth-ish service, but it's got a lot of scratches in it. And so just exactly like working with our jewelry, we're going to swap out that belt for a finer grit and we're going to do the whole thing again uh, until it gets uh, a sort of a smoother, satiny looking finish. And we're just going to keep stepping down. So I went ahead and swapped out this belt. I stepped down to a 220 grit. And I'm going to show you that just like with hammering, the best way to get a nice smooth surface is to overlap your strokes. So I'm just going up and down. And I'm overlapping the strokes. You can already see that is much smoother than it was on the last grip. So we'll step it down again. So I've taken both of these hammers down um, pretty drastically, just up to the 14, I'm sorry, the 400 grip. So now we've stepped it down to 600 grip. Okay, and it's exactly the same uh, as the previous. Uh, iterations. Let me just warn you, you're going to be very tempted to run your fingers over that nice pretty smooth surface. And let me just tell you that the friction makes these hammerheads extremely hot. Okay, so one of the choices you have is to dip it in some water and then dry it off before you move on. Uh, otherwise, just be aware, um, they, they're warm and they stay warm for quite a while. 
Okay, here we go. So my camera operator says I need to smile more because I've had a little too much of the resting bitch face thing going on. <gasps> Uh, so I'll try to smile. I, I really am having a good time. I just take this stuff really seriously. So we've gone ahead and sanded down the heads with uh, the finest grit that we have in the belts. And we're going to go ahead and move on to the finishing portion of this. Uh, my friend Letty, who is running the camera for me today, everybody say, hi, Letty. Uh, okay, some of you met her at BeadFest. She's kind of awesome. Um, she asked me, would you do this to like a frets hammer? So the answer is no, because frets hammers come pre-dressed. Uh, High-end hammers generally do. So frets hammers, NC black hammers, excellent hammers, both of them. Um, but you do occasionally need to do what I'm about to show you just to kind of clean them, clean them up. You can see this one's been used a lot and it has kind of some, some scuff marks. It's not quite as awesome as it uh, might be. And so I'm gonna show you how we clean that up. Okay. So what I have here is a little pad of papers that I put together. Uh, these are very uh, high grade, high quality finishing papers and they start at 800 grit. They go to 1200 grit, 2000 grit, 2500 grit, and then 3000 grit. And what I do is I just cut a sheet into four pieces and then staple them together in little pads, okay? I do this next part on a, uh, um, sandbag, a leather sandbag. You can get those at Rio. I think Kevin Potter sells some. Um, this is a great thing to have on your bench. If you don't have one of those, you can get sort of close to the same effect by doubling up a work towel really, really thick so that it creates kind of a pad. Uh, and then you're just going to start by laying your first piece of sandpaper down on this surface, okay? And you're just literally gonna go in circles and kind of rock the head back and forth. And the goal is, again, you're overlapping those strokes, you wanna get kind of even coverage, and you wanna, as much as possible, follow the contour of the face of the hammer so that there are no flat spots. So, no resting bitch face. This is what the hammers look like after their first pass over the 800 grit sandpaper on the sandbag. And you can see that there are some squirrels, we've got overlapping marks, okay, no sharp edges. Okay, you wanna check your work as you go. And then, literally, this is just as simple as flipping over the next page and stepping your way down to the finest grit. So, if that's you, and you're one of those people that don't need to have another piece of equipment uh, in your garage or your studio or whatever, that's fine. What you'll do is you'll take um, higher grits of sandpaper and make your book out of those. So you'll start at 120, 200, 400, 600, and then you'll add the 800, 1200, etc. So you'll just have a slightly thicker book with the uh, heavier grits at the front and um, you'll just do exactly the same thing with the heavier grits. It'll take you a little bit longer than it would if you am I kidding, a lot longer uh, than if you had the piece of equipment, but that's okay. It's totally, totally worth doing. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, step through and get these finished up. I'll work through to the uh, finest grit and then show you what that looks like. Uh, and then somewhere in there, probably uh, when I get to like the 2500 or the 3000, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly clean up my frets hammer. I'll show you what that looks like too. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we have stepped down through the 3,000 grit <clears throat> sandpaper and we are now sitting at my horrifyingly messy bench. Uh, this is post bead fest and so not everything is put away yet, please don't judge me. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to polish these up now. You really do need a flex shaft uh, or something like that for this next step. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a chamois, um, uh, what is this called, a chamois thingy that goes into your flex shaft. Uh, you can get these at Rio Grande, a uh, bunch of other places, but um, this is what I use. And <clears throat> a little bit of Fabuluster. Fabuluster is great. You need to make sure that whatever you use on your steel um, is only used for steel. You don't want to get that stuff uh, mixed up with your silver stuff. So designate this chamois for your um, 
steel tools, okay? And then you're just going to come in and you're going to polish. And if I wasn't trying to show you how to do this, I would have this like up on a bench pan or something. And you're just going to bring that up to a nice shine. And you may need to get some more Fabuluster. Okay, you want to work always in a circular motion and make sure that you keep the buff moving so that you don't put any drag marks uh, in your metal. And this goes pretty quickly. You can get this right up to a mirror finish. Okay, so I would just keep working on that a little bit, but this is very smooth. This particular hammer was used by a student in one of our workshops and had a huge gouge in it. Uh, and we went ahead and sanded that down and refinished it. So once you've kind of gotten it up to the finish that you want, you're gonna wanna test it on a piece of scrap metal. And then just take a look at it and make sure that it's not leaving uh, ugly marks. And if you take a look at those really close up, you can see they're nice and smooth and clean. They look good. So that's how you dress a hammer. Um, it doesn't look like much now, but if you keep this chamois handy and your fabuluster, uh, you know, at the end of a work day, take a second to just put some of this on there and just kind of clean it up, and then you won't have to do the big work. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a question in the comments and I'll try to answer it for you. This is Francesca at Roadhouse Arts for the Art Jewelry Elements team, signing out.